California edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. Mike Gardner is joining us today. He is a member of the Riverside City Council. Who would have ever thunk that this would be the headline of the Los Angeles Times business section? Growth in Inland Empire soars. Hallelujah. That's all I have to say. Hallelujah. It is about time. Wow. Soars? I mean, I expected a recovery, but soars? I think a number of things are, are driving it. Um, home sales have picked up dramatically, and the foreclosure problem that that we had is you know, behind us, and, and you know, property values are picking up substantially. But what's interesting about home prices and home sales is that while we do see a turnaround, there is not such a rapid growth like there is in L.A. County, Orange County, and so Riverside County, San Bernardino County seems more affordable. It, well, by comparison, right. absolutely. Construction um, is still a bit down, but better. Yes. Okay, but we got to talk about the bright spots, and there are so many bright spots. I want to focus on one company. That company's name is Amazon. Yes. you got to be loving Amazon right now. Tell us what they've been doing in the Inland Empire. Amazon has opened two now fulfillment centers in the Inland Empire. Um, and the nice thing for local government about a fulfillment center as opposed to a warehouse or distribution center is it's a point of sale. Oh, yes. So you get sales tax from everything that flows out of that facility. And as I understand it, the first was in San Bernardino, right. second, Moreno Valley. Yes. Another one coming down in Redlands. Yes. And look, you know, those may be in different counties and may not technically be in Riverside, but, sir, you know, oh, it benefits the whole the, region. Yeah, the, the region. Anything that's good for a piece of the region is good for the rest of the region. Right. Every city would like to have that in their jurisdiction. But if I can't have it right. and I can help my neighbor get it, sure. I'm going to help my neighbor get it. And it's got to be a little extra sweet because, as you may remember, Amazon was really picking a major fight with California over yes. the question of Internet sales tax. And it was former Senator uh, Bob Dutton of this region yes. who negotiated the compromise, and here we are. And, and it's working very well. And there actually are some facilities in Riverside that may have the Amazon name on them in oh, the next year or two. Let it be. I want to continue and talk about distribution and warehousing. And I do want to get a sense from you, because that is another very bright spot, yes. distribution warehouse. I think it's fair to say that that industry doesn't have the best reputation. Not that they're not well run, but right. it's not seen as the most desirable business expansion. And I'm just wondering, sir, why? I mean, at a certain level, if it's working and folks want to come to the IE for distribution and warehousing, come on down. We'll take you. I, I think it can be good for property tax. So uh -huh. local government likes that aspect of it. The drawback is it's very land intensive and relatively job poor on a per square, per square foot basis. Like you've got so much land out here. Well, in the region as a whole, yes. Within right. some cities, Riverside as an example, is fairly well built out. Yeah, well stated, well stated. But that being said, do you feel as if there is kind of a newfound respect for distribution and warehousing? Because, look, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it's more than not yeah. broke. People it, are, are coming to it, this region. Yeah, it for does. It. it does work. There's significant expenditure and, and investment that people want to make here. There are impacts, though. The delivery in and out. You have a lot of traffic and right. air quality impacts. I mean, look, I'm on that the you 60. Have to deal with. Yeah, I'm right. on the 60 and 10, and I see those trucks all the right. time. But they're respectful, and I smile because I know it's helping the Inland Empire. And they're bigger than you. And they are much bigger than me. Uh, at, at the same time. I want to get a sense as to how the improvement in port traffic is helping those distribution centers. I know the answer, but I'm sure you do yes, as well. Yes, it's absolutely, and actually it's part of why the distribution centers are here, right. is to handle the goods that flow through the ports. There isn't enough available land closer to the ports, so that's a reason that we're the closest area to the ports where you can put the big distribution centers. I'm wondering if this region is going to start working even more closely with Long Beach, with Los Angeles, because you know, you probably do know, in, Lo in Long Beach, for example, they are building the Mill Harbor Project, right. which is in response to the Panama Canal. It's just going to get bigger and better. 
And so are there alliances, are there discussions to try to work symbiotically with the Long Beach Port, as an example, yeah. as the Mill Harbor there, Project comes online? There, there are a lot of discussions through the Southern California Association of Governments, which Riverside sits on. Sure, sure. Um, there also is a bit of concern about that because mm. the containers move primarily by rail and both the major railroads main lines come through the city of Riverside. So that ups the pressure for us to build more grade separations which are quite expensive and time consuming to build. We have two under construction right now in the city and they, the actual construction is disruptive of the area around it. Once it's done, it's very right, nice. Right, but could we not kind of turn that on its head and see that as an opportunity for growth, for catalytic events surrounding the Great Separation? Oh, no question. And a, a, a good Great Separation project does make the area right. around it better and you can get more and new development next to it. Let's talk about jobs most generally. Yes, the Inland Empire still has a higher unemployment rate than the rest of the state, but the drop is dramatic yes. since the end of the recession. And what's even more dramatic is the breadth of the jobs coming into this region. They're not all low end, they're right. not all high end, they're a it's, wonderful mix. It's a, it's a big mix, and that's one of the things that draws people to this area is, you know, Riverside, as an example, is a university town. Right. Three universities sure. and a very big community college. So we have a well-trained workforce for the white-collar jobs. But there are also lots of people who um, will take the, the warehousing jobs and the manufacturing jobs, the, the less trained sure. jobs, non-white-collar jobs. So there's a real good blend of available workers in this area. I mean, look, you're the envy of a lot of the state as a result. And I'm wondering how has government played a role? How has the Riverside City Council, how have your friends on other city councils in the county to create this environment? This It can't happen in a vacuum. It doesn't. Yeah, I and, mean, something, and, you've done yeah. something over the last few years. I, I think there are a number of things that, that help with it. Um, each county has an economic development department mm -hmm. and the cities in the county work with that department for their county. Mm -hmm. The two counties work together, Riverside do and they? San Bernardino County. They do. They do. Um, the cities work together across the county line and with adjoining cities within mm -hmm. the same county. And there's an organization called the Inland Empire Economic Partnership oh, sure. that yeah. attempts to represent the entire area. I must ask though about your sister city, not technically speaking, metaphorically, San Bernardino. Yes. We've talked about this, how Riverside, yet 20 minutes from San Bernardino, and that's with traffic, and yet Riverside really has weathered quite nicely during the recession. San Bernardino went bankrupt. And so what is being done? I, I mean, I'm presuming if growth in the Inland Empire soars, San Bernardino's part of that. Yes. But talk to us about you know the challenges facing that city and how the region can help that city turn around. I think there were a couple of things that drove San Marino's big problems. They, they were heavily dependent on Kaiser Steel for right. jobs. When Kaiser closed, that cost many jobs of people who lived in the city of San Bernardino. Then the Southern Pacific shops closed and went back to the Midwest, and that hurt them. And right after that, Mar um, Norton Air Force Base oh, yes. closed, and that was 10,000 jobs. Sure. So that was a huge hit to their economic support system and it's been very difficult for them to try to recover from that and then of course the recession following right. all of that and then pension costs mm, right. and, and corruption um, in the county and all of that so but still it's to the benefit of all regional cities that San Bernardino does better absolutely and, and so are they part of this equation they are and as you pointed out they got the first of the Amazon well facilities. stated right and they have room for more um, they're working hard to redevelop the former Norton Air Force Base site, and that will help them as well. You heard it here. Growth in the Inland Empire soars. Who would have thunk? It's great news. His name is Mike Gardner. He is a member of the Riverside City Council. My name is Brad Pomeranz, and this is California Edition.